Here we are with another episode of the Salmon Trout Steelheader podcast. I'm your host, Lucas Holmgren, and this is an article that actually comes from June-July issue of Salmon Trout Steelheader in 1996. And I'm going to murder this last name, uh, and I sincerely apologize to the author as this is a wonderful article, but Dr. Colin Kageyama, K-A-G-E-Y-A-M-A. Again, sincerely apologize if I totally ruined your last name, but just wanted you to know that I love this article, which is called Water and Color. The water on the North Fork of the Nehalem is green, 39 degrees with about three feet of visibility. It is the day before Christmas and I bounce a number five silver and fluorescent red spinner through the tail out of a nice drift. On the third cast, a bright 11 pound hatchery hen hits and ends up on the bank about 15 minutes later. At the next pool, an eight pound buck follows suit and joins her for an early Christmas dinner. I've caught between one to five fish in 30 of my last 41 days of fishing. Not bad for a beginner with less than two years experience. All this in a year that was considered one of the worst Oregon steelhead seasons of all time. I have two advantages that most beginners do not have. I have a great teacher, Joe Madrid of the Oregon Fishing Club, and an extensive background in optics. I understand how light travels underwater. I've read the following statements in numerous fishing articles. Red is the first color to drop out of the spectrum. Red lures turn black underwater. Colors drop out in the order Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Because of my background in optics, I knew that these statements were false, but I decided not to say anything about it. I thought these statements were either made by fishermen who were not being honest or weren't very skillful. In the December 95 edition of STS Magazine, a writer repeated these statements, writing red as the first color to drop out of the spectrum. Red turns black in two feet of water. Talk about a shock. For the first time, I realized that even professional steelheaders did not understand underwater optics. I decided to write to STS Magazine. This information was too important to be withheld from the fishing public. I've spent many hours swimming in the Wilson River in the Clackamas watching summer steelhead and finding fluorescent lures at the bottom of deep pools. When swimming in deep pools, everything looks deep blue-green, except for the fluorescent red and orange fishing lures that are snagged on underwater rocks and branches. Underwater scientists and deep sea divers know what I am about to tell you is true. The problem was that until recently there was no way for the average fisherman to use this information without thousands of dollars of special equipment. In 1984, Paul Johnson published a book, The Scientific Angler. If you have any question about the validity of what I'm going to tell you, examine two underwater photographs in his book, page 163 and page 165. Plate 1 is a photo of a man in scuba gear standing at the bottom of a muddy blackwater lake. Everything around him appears a drab green brown except for a small piece of orange red tape on his snorkel tube that glowed like a neon bulb. Plate 9 shows a rainbow-colored plate in 60 feet of water. Nearly all the colors have turned either black or gray. The brightest color was fluorescent red. The darkest color was non-fluorescent red. The confusion. After talking to some fishing pros, I was surprised at how much confusion there was on this topic. There is a real lack of understanding about some basic terms. Color. White light is made up of light of all different colors. Light moves in waves, and the length of the wave governs the color it appears. A long wavelength light is orange or red. A short wavelength light is violet or blue. Fluorescence. A very misunderstood term. Non-fluorescent red paints need to be hit with red light in order to look red. Fluorescent red paints will look red even if they are hit with only ultraviolet blue or green light. Fluorescence does not mean bright, and it does not mean glow in the dark. A fisherman must consider fluorescent red and non-fluorescent red to be two completely different colors. Even though they may look the same in sunlight, they behave very differently underwater. Roy G. Biv. This letter order represents the order of colors from long wavelength to short. Nothing more. It has nothing to do with the order in which light drops out underwater. By looking at your lure in air, 
or by looking down at your lure in the water, you cannot predict color changes in your lure. The lure could look very much different if you were actually in the water with scuba equipment, looking straight at it. I put together a demonstration of underwater color shifts for Nick Amato and the staff of STS Magazine. I used some red yarn, red lures, and a number 3 filter from the Steelhead Color Selector Kit. Prime Winter Steelhead Water filters out certain colors of light, and this filter roughly duplicates these conditions. When you look at the red yarns and red lures through the filter, interesting things happen. Some of the red yarns and lures turn black, while others literally glow a bright red. This is the same color shift that Paul Johnson noted while scuba diving over 10 years ago. The deep water color shift. If we painted a board with a stripe of blue, yellow, and red in fluorescent paint and non-fluorescent paint, and viewed it in sunlight, it might be difficult to tell the difference between the fluorescent and non-fluorescent colors. If we took the same board and viewed it in deep green water, the non-fluorescent blue, yellow, and reds would begin to darken. The fluorescent blue would darken, while the fluorescent yellows and reds would appear to brighten. The fluorescent reds would be the brightest. Scuba divers report that the type and order of the color shift is different in clear blue water or turbid brown water. They also report that colors shift in a different matter when they are underwater and move away from the color target. The long range color shift. In deep green water at close range, the red fluorescent lures are very bright. In clear blue water at long range, red fluorescent lures will appear to turn gray. In clear water, a steelhead might first see your lure when it is 30 feet away. A fluorescent red lure at that distance might appear almost gray. As the steelhead attacks the lure at a distance of 5 to 10 feet, the gray lure suddenly changes color and begins to glow bright red. This shocking change might spook the steelhead. This color shift can be a big problem when fishing fluorescent red lures in clear water. The moral for this story is what expert anglers have known for decades. Use fluorescent red lures in milky green steelhead water. Avoid these same colors in clear blue summer steelhead conditions. Fluorescent blues, greens, and yellows are the brightest underwater at long distance, depending on water turbidity. The Experiment, Part 2. Problems with Red Steelhead Lures I tested nearly a hundred red steelhead lures which were made of feathers or yarn. I used the SCS number 3 winter steelhead filter and found that many of the lures went through huge color shifts, turning to dark orange, gray, or black. I'm not going to mention the lures which darken, but I will say that I found that two lures stayed very bright. The two most visible feather yarn lures that I tested were the Aerofly shrimp pattern and the Bomac jig with pink pearl head and pink white feathers. These lures stayed bright under a variety of lighting conditions that you might face while fishing winter steelhead. Both of these are considered to be outstanding producers of winter steelhead by many expert fishermen. The underwater visibility of yarn was even more unpredictable than feathers. More than half the red yarns tested turned orange, gray, purple, or black. The moral for this story, when you are using red yarn or feathers, you have no idea what color it will look like underwater. What is the actual order that colors drop out underwater? For the winter steelheader, the most important water is milky green. I can give you a general answer for this type of water. The colors that drop out first are non-fluorescent colors that are shorter or longer in wavelength than the dominant color of the water. You lose your non-fluorescent violets, red, indigos, and oranges first. Your non-fluorescent greens hold up pretty well. As you go into deeper water, you begin to start losing your short wavelength fluorescent violets, indigos, and blues. Your long wavelength fluorescent oranges and reds stay very bright in deep water. At short range in deep milky green water, the fluorescent oranges and reds are the brightest colors. I consider examples of short distant presentation to be drift fishing or throwing spinners in small rivers. With long distance presentation, Different fluorescent colors are brighter depending on the water turbidity. Fluorescent whites and blues would be brightest in the ocean. Fluorescent blues and greens in bays and tidewater, and fluorescent greens and yellows in large rivers for long distance presentations like trolling spinners or pulling plugs. When selecting lures, it is important to take into consideration the distance at which the steelhead will first become aware of the lure and the turbidity of the water. Things to remember. Most red drift bobbers and plugs are made with fluorescent dyes which will stay bright red in deep water. The problem is that the steelheader uses many red products which are unpredictable in their color shifts such as red yarn, feathers, tape, tubing, rubber baits, row, and soft plastics. From the surface looking down, 
all red lures will appear to turn black in deep water. This change in appearance has no relation to color changes that a scuba diver or a fish might see. A true fluorescent red, which glows red, could be one of the brightest colors that the fish could see at a short distance, in deep green water. Non-fluorescent reds, which turn orange, gray, or black, would be much less visible under most winter steelhead conditions. You must consider fluorescent red and non-fluorescent red to be totally and non-related colors because they behave differently underwater. A true fluorescent red lure in green water will not turn black. Final thoughts. Not surprisingly, the colors which are brightest underwater are very close to the combinations that expert steelheaders have been using for years. Expert anglers know that they are successful when they use materials from specific companies. They know from experience that red yarn from company A will raise their chances for success. They may also know that yarn from company B seldom catches fish. By trial and error, they have found which brands of red yarns or lures are most effective and visible. When the recreational angler is told that someone caught a steelhead with a red lure, he may try to duplicate that success by using a red lure from a different company or dye lot. If he does not use the same lure from the same dye lot, his lure might look very different underwater than the lure used by the successful fisherman. Being able to prejudge the visibility of a lure before going out on the river can greatly increase the rate at which you learn to fish. The key to success is finding a great teacher and understanding what is actually happening underwater. I believe that the understanding underwater visibility of different lure colors can give you a huge edge in learning to master the art of steelhead fishing. So again, an excellent article from the Dr. K, as I will call him here, who is a doctor of optometry and is totally addicted to steelhead fishing. I know I definitely learned something from that article and I would ask that you would tell your friends about this podcast, comment, subscribe. We'd love to have more and more of you listening. Going to be providing more and more information. Hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully it's interesting. Feel free to get in touch with us at salmontroutsteelheader.com and let's talk about more fishing. Salmon, steelhead, and trout. Thank you guys so much. Again, please tell your friends to subscribe. Thank you.